Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice. I'm going to say it again. And we will rejoice and be glad to be in it. These are glory days. Come on, let's say it together. We always say it. Every one of you that are watching, God bless you. These are glory days and not gloomy days. Glory days for the righteous and gloomy for the wicked. We are living in fantastic times. Holy Ghost, powerful impact times. Also, go call your friends and tag them and share this. We're gonna we are having an anointed, powerful uh, uh, live stream. I have dear dear friend of mine. We love her. Oh, Donna and Jack. We just love how Lord is using her uh, just through the through the United States. I mean, and she. I've said it before, and I'm not gonna stop. Donna is a glory carrier. That I mean, come on. We many of us carry a lot of things. You <laughs> carry virus, uh, money, or whatever. But she carries the glory of God, and we don't see very much of that. And you know what? And just like God is just renewing her youth. That's the best way to say. He is renewing her youth, and uh, so this is a great thing. And I'm going to bring her on. So tag your friends right now. We have a lot to tell you of what's happening behind the scenes, what God is doing, and we're going to bring it to you. We love each and every one of you saints, and I want to thank you again always for standing with the prophets of God, standing on his word. It is so important, all righty, because the good news is that the bad news didn't work out. Woo! So I'm going to bring our friend Donna right now. Hallelujah. Hello. Hey. It, what's been happening is really the presence of God has so increased in the ministry over, over this past year, uh, but it's been going on for a few years now. It just seems like it's, uh, he told me, ever increasing glory, uh, that it would never decrease, that the glory would increase. And the glory is really the tangible presence of God. Uh, one time he was talking to me about his glory and the, uh, the father said to me, can you separate your humanity from who you are? And I, I was like, no, I can't leave my humanity home and go to the store. <laughs> and he said, in the same way, you cannot separate my glory from who I am. So when the glory of God falls, it's the tangible presence of God. And this, everything we need, everything we need is in the glory. So when the glory of God falls, uh, God just touches people if they're hearts are broken. He, he mends their hearts. We have deliverance sessions going on at the church all throughout the week. And people are getting delivered in the glory because the glory of God's on everybody and it's, it's in the church. So when people come, they're getting deliverance, but it's so easy because the glory of God makes everything easy. He, he makes our burdens light, you know? God just comes in. And uh, things that would have been like heavy loads, heavy bricks, that we had in the glory, it's like light feathers. It just, woof, <laughs> causes them to go away. And we're just seeing wonderful, wonderful things. Uh, uh, conversions, people getting saved, people getting on fire for God. But the biggest yeah, yeah. thing that I'm really seeing is people that never operated in gifts of the Holy Spirit now are operating in these gifts, the gifts of healing, uh, wonderful, wonderful gifts of prophecy, words of knowledge, yeah, people, we have people come forward uh, during the prayer meeting and we have a basket of all the intentions that people put in, any, any intentions people send us for prayer, everything goes in the basket. And so we have a, a prayer group that comes forward and they pray around it on uh, Friday night at, at the end of our prayer time before we get into the service part. And they get words of knowledge, like one after another after another, people that never operated in that gift before. Even, even we have a little 11-year-old girl that she's on the prayer team. She gets words of knowledge. So it's wonderful. That's the thing that I'm the most delighted about is because it's very frustrating to feel that you have uh, gifts or you have calling in your life and there's no avenue to use the gift or it just isn't activated. And to see these people that, you know, just never operated in these gifts, they're standing up prophesying, proclaiming the word of God, starting prayer meetings in their homes. It's just wonderful. God is mobilizing his army and getting his people up because the great harvest is coming in, Manny. We're going to see a huge 
harvest of souls. And he's getting the body ready, the bride ready, so that when the harvest comes in, he's going to have laborers that are going to be able to tend to these people, bring them through deliverance, mentor them, pray over them for healing, all the things that people need when they come out of the world, all chewed up and in a bad way. People with addictions getting set free. God's getting, he's mobilizing an army. And that's what excites me the most that I've been seeing over this past year is to see him raise up his children and activate them and release them to use their gifts. It's wonderful. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You know, you know I'm, I'm going to tell you, Donna, I'm trying, I'm doing this so I can reduce the echo. You, I have seen with these last few years, I'm knowing you, how the Lord has elevated you and used you so much in this platform because we're living in glory days and you are a glory carrier. And, you know, me and my wife, our spirit, we knit to you and Jack. And we just, it's just, it's, you know, it's just incredible. It's just incredible. As you have been talking about people that are moving in the spirit, the way they're doing, this is like, this is historic because this is, this is happening on such a greater platform than it was before. A greater plat a platform. And, you know, people are sad. You know, we got to pray for them. But there are Christians out there that are talking doom and gloom. They're thinking it's the United States is done with. They're thinking this is it. You know, you know, the, the, the United States is going bye bye. United States is not going bye bye. I'm telling you who's going to go bye bye. 46 is going bye bye. And, uh, you know, that's going bye bye. You know, there's so much the Lord has revealed to me. And I'm going to start revealing some things on this live stream. Well, but Donna, I want you to tell us, tell us what God has revealed to you about the next six months, the next few months. And I'm just let you. I'm just gonna let you have the floor. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I I, I have um, a couple of words that the Lord has spoken to me just over the last few days that I know are going to encourage everybody. Encouraged me so much. He told me today. He he said, you know, I was visiting with him in heaven, <laughs> and it was just wonderful. And he said, he told me, he said, you know, he said I could take you home to be with me in heaven, but I don't want you to miss the glory days that are coming. So I don't want you to miss. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pouring the atmosphere of heaven out upon the earth. The glory is the atmosphere of heaven. When, you, when, you, when I visit heaven, this is what I feel, the glory of God, the love of God is just pervasive, like you're breathing in the love of God. He said, I'm going to be pouring out the atmosphere of heaven, and I want you to be there to experience so ha, the wonderful glory and to see all those prayers that my children have been praying answered in this hour. It's a wonderful day we're, we're going to be coming into. So I'm going to just share what um, what the Lord spoke to me. Um, he said, When a season of suffering leaves, the honor and appreciation the rescuers receive is over the top. When your armies liberated the war-torn people in Europe and won the war back in World War II, there was a wonderful celebration and heartfelt gratitude for those who came to the rescue. This is what is coming to your world. And while he was saying this to me, this was Sunday he was telling me this, he said, I could see uh, back, way back when uh, the war ended and there was all dancing in the streets throughout Europe and the, the soldiers were all celebrated. You know, the United States came and liberated Europe. God used the United States wonderfully. And he said, this, this, then he continued, he said, celebration of the God who was denied. That's our God. Celebration of the God who was denied will be worldwide, as well as towards those that I do use to liberate my oppressed children. And that's what, 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 what went on after World War II. The United States was celebrated because of how God used them to liberate the people from Hitler, from all that was going on there. It was, it was such celebration. They were dancing. We see pictures of it, all this, and maybe newsreels of it. It was wonderful. He said, yes, heartfelt gratitude 
will be commonplace and sincerely expressed. There will be dancing in the streets as there was when World War II ended. So this is what's coming. And I, to me, this goes along with, I've heard your word that you spoke over the weekend. At the mountain. mountain on the mountain. And I'm, I, I was, I heard it the day after you said it, and I had just gotten this word. And I was like, oh my goodness, it's the same thing God just told me. <laughs> but I heard what you were saying. And then he said, then a great time of restoration in rebuilding will take place that will comfort and heal my children. So first there's going to be this great celebration. Then there's going to become a time of restoration and rebuilding. That's what happened in Europe too after the war. Restoration and a rebuilding. He said justice, and this is what you were talking about, justice. Justice will come quickly and suddenly. Justice is coming quickly and suddenly. Payback to those who were stolen from the people that were stolen from payback is coming as well as payback is going to come for the thieves the enemy used there's going to be pet payback coming good payback for those who were stolen from bad payback for those that did the stealing he said yes they will be paid back for all the harm they caused retaliation and retribution will fall on all those who loosed wickedness on this world it will cause many to turn to me in repentance when they reap justice and judgment. So he's saying when people are reaping justice and judgment for what they've done wrong, they will many of them will turn to God in repentance, which is what we want to see. We want to see God's children repent. He said, and at the same time, he said, it will bring solace and comfort to those they oppressed to see my hand of judgment fall on those who hurt them their loved ones and their land. Many people have lost loved ones because of all this. And they've lost a lot. They've lost businesses. They've lost homes. They've, they've lost so much. And when people see God's judgment fall and see those that caused all this havoc, reaping what they sow, the punishment fall on them, and them losing their positions, it's going to bring comfort to people. Not that people are going to rejoice because someone else is suffering, but it's going to comfort people to know God is defending them, he's honoring them, he's helping them, but he's, he's causing those that cause them the sorrow to be punished for what they've done. He said, your soul and the souls of my children who have endured great injustice and abuse shall be comforted as I do arise and bring forth justice worldwide. And he really emphasized worldwide. So what's been going on isn't just the United States. There's great injustice that has been going on all over the world. And it's just going to bring people all over the world comfort to see justice come. He said, peace and prosperity will be restored. We just hang on to that. Peace and prosperity. Right now, I mean, the price of fuel, I mean, everything. God's saying, no, 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 no. Listen to me. I'm telling you, peace and prosperity will be restored. And God says, when I bring this great rescue event, not only am I going to be celebrated and I'm going to be honored, but those I use to bring this forth, they're going to be celebrated and honored too. <laughs> he said, truth will rule the land. Truth will rule the land. And then he led me to Jeremiah 30 and 31. And I'm not going to read them all, but I'm just going to read a couple of sentences here and there just to see how the Lord confirmed the word. All right? Go ahead, go ahead. Just to, so people know, this isn't just Donna thinking this stuff. <laughs> God really did speak. Okay? In Jeremiah 3, now I'm going to skip around, but you guys can read it on your own. I will restore the fortunes of my people. Jeremiah 30, uh, verse 3. I will restore the fortunes of my people. And then I'm going to skip over to uh, verse 7 and 8. Yes, yet God will rescue them. For on that day, says the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke from their necks and snap their chains, and foreigners shall no longer be their masters. For they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them, says the Lord. And then I'm just going to skip down. But in that coming day, all who are destroying you shall be destroyed. 
and all your enemies shall be slaves. Those who robbed you shall be robbed, and those attacking you shall be attacked. I will give you back your health again and heal your wounds. Now down to verse 18. Jerusalem shall be built upon her ruins. The palace will be reconstructed as it was before. That's restoration and reconstruction. The cities will be filled with joy and great thanksgiving. And I will multiply my people and make of them a great and honored nation. I will punish anyone who hurts them. Down to verse 21. They will have their own ruler again. God's saying, I'm going to give you your own ruler again. And it hasn't, we, we've been robbed of that. Just rulers that we, you know, wanted in office. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. Suddenly, just what Manuel, that's what you were saying uh, on, on that visitation you had on the mountaintop. This is going to happen quickly and suddenly. Suddenly, the devastating whirlwind of the Lord roars with fury. It shall burst upon the heads of the wicked. So suddenly, God's going to show up and he's going to bring justice. We need, you had that, the, the, the mallet for justice. And, and then in Jeremiah 31, I will rebuild your nation. And what was he telling me in that word? I'm going to rebuild and restore. There's going to be a time of rebuilding and restoration that's coming. I will rebuild your nation. Right now, our nation's in a mess, but it's not going to be much longer because <laughs> the glory of God is going to come. Oh, and cover the land. And he, God says, I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to rebuild your nation. You will again be happy and dance merrily with the timbrels. And that's what he was telling me. There's going to be dancing and rejoicing, just like after World War II ended. There's going to be this great dancing and rejoicing that's going to take place all throughout the land. And then verse 7, For the Lord says, Sing with joy all that I, for all that I will do for Israel, the greatest of the nations. Shout out with praise and joy. The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. People are going to be rejoicing because they know God did it. God's going to do it in such a way. Everyone's going to know only God could do this. Bring about this. He calls it a grand rescue event that's coming. And, and I'll just skip down a little bit. I will turn their mourning into joy, and I will comfort them and make them rejoice for their captivity with all its sorrows will be behind them. And it goes on like that. If you read all of 30 and 31, that's really the message. It's going to be restoration, rebuilding, dancing in the streets, rejoicing. Because why? Because our God is rescuing us. But people are going to recognize how mighty and powerful and awesome and loving and wonderful our God is. That he hears our prayers and he answers them. And this is, this is what he's, we're coming into. Then today, I just heard another couple of things. He said, yes, storms are coming, but they will be short-lived. And then the rainbows of renewed covenants will shine all over the world. So during this time of transition, might be a little bit of a storm, you know, a little bit, not much. And he said, they'll be short-lived, and then the rainbow of renewed covenant is going to cover the world. We're, we're, we're renewing our covenant with God, that he's our God, we serve him and him alone. And then I'm just going to share this with you, because this really um, touched my heart deeply, what he said to me today. He said, what your nation has sowed, it shall reap. Your nation has been used by my hand many times to rescue the oppressed. Now I will launch a grand rescue event for you to reap what you sowed. So he was showing me how we went and we sacrificed our youth, our young people went and fought in the war, World War II, and many other wars and many battles to rescue people that were being oppressed by dictators. And he said, you sowed whatever we reap, we sow. Okay, so if you sow a seed, a corn kernel in the ground, you're going to get a corn plant and you're going to reap corn. So the same way, we sowed rescuing other nations. And as we sowed that we were rescuers, we were used by God to go and reach out to people in great sacrifice. It, would, it cost us a lot to do what we did as a nation. And God remembers that. All the sins that we've committed, we've had many, many people, the remnant has been praying and repenting. So all those sins are under the blood of Jesus. 
He doesn't look at those. He sees the good that we did as a nation. And he sees that we were a nation and we have been a nation that has sacrificed, has given. We've been the breadbasket of the world. But we've also been our brother's keepers. We've gone to other lands and rescued people that were being oppressed and really badly treated. So he said, now, he said, I will launch a grand rescue event for you to reap what you sowed. And he said, this was why it was so important for you as a nation to follow my lead and go into foreign lands to set people free from the cruel taskmasters and dictators who were systematically destroying them in their freedoms. I knew a great rescue would be needed for your nation and you can only reap what you sow. So he was telling me, he said, I, that was why God showed me why he led us as a nation to be like the rescuers of the world. When, when other nations were getting in trouble, it was always the United States that was sent to rescue them. He, he said, I had you do that because you can only reap what you sow. So if you need to be rescued, you've got to sow seeds of being a rescuer. And God said, I knew there was going to come a day where you were going to need to be rescued. So I had you sow those seeds of being rescuers of other nations all through the years, way before our ancestors did it for years and years. He said, that was why, because this day has come. Now you're going to reap all those seeds you sowed rescuing other nations and I'm going to rescue you. He said, we, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we set you up for victory by causing us to be rescuers. He, God set us up for a great victory by causing us to sow those seeds. As you did bring victory to others, now you will reap the fruit of victory for your land and your people. You did cause many to celebrate through years of selfless sacrifice. Now you will reap a grand celebration of the victory over evil. That's, that, that to me was very, very, very encouraging. Very encouraging. Is that, I, I never, I was like in awe when God was showing me this today. That he set us up. He set us up for this grand rescue event so that we could have this victory by having us be a nation. Everybody knows that about the United States. We're a nation that's always gone and rescued other nations, other peoples. And he said, I set you up. <laughs> So now you sowed those seeds, you're going to reap a wonderful rescue event that's coming about. Donna, I'm going to tell you, everything you said was right on. And the new revelation that God is bringing in. You see, many times people would like to focus on the bad, but there's a lot of good. God raised up this nation saints, as Donna was saying, you know, you know, we're doing things, the United States have done things behind the scenes. You cannot go to the media to find a history of this nation. You have to go to the Lord. Millions, and Donna knows this, and billions has been sent out through this nation over the years, not just the last few years, over the years before you and I was even born. To help out nations. God doesn't just walk away from that. Your prayers, our ancestors' prayers, our founding fathers' prayers are rooted in the soil of this nation. It's rooted in the soil of this nation. And so the enemy will love for us to focus on the negative. And not what God is seeing. This was this was the first time, Donna, this year, that the Lord showed me. He says, Lord, I'm thinking, Lord, my God, you, this things are this is happening, this is happening, and you keep you keep showing me glory days. And then the voice, the voice of the divine, he says, My son, this is not just I'm not answering the prayers based off your constitution of this nation. Is I'm answering the prayers based off a covenant I've made. 
in the beginning. And that just blew my mind, saints. And, and Donna, I'm going to tell you something. What the people saw on Saturday, me in the mountains, just being up there was a miracle. There is no signals. I wasn't supposed to have a signal. You guys don't realize how high I was up. I was not supposed to have a signal at all. When the Lord said, I want you to do a live stream from one of the top of the mountains where I meet you at. So my logical thinking, saints, was, Lord, we don't have a signal. <laughs> and I know some of it was a little blurry. I'm telling you, it was a miracle. It was a miracle, Donna. And there was such a drench of the presence of the Lord on that mountain. Saints, you have no idea. And this was a kind of a last minute thing. You know, so it's like maybe 24 hour. You know, I want you to get up, brother. I want you to go to the mountains and I'm going to meet you. I'm going to download and I'm going to what's going on. And when and I'm just telling you, it, it was it was beyond what I could express on that live stream. And I was so thrilled that Donna saw that, you know, because she didn't know God spoke to her. And, and God had her to, to, you know, to watch it. And she watched that afterwards. But that was confirmation of what the Lord was given. You see, because the Lord, you see, God says, you know, can two or more walk together unless they agree? If, if God is saying it to me, he's saying it to his other servants. Now, now, it may not always come out the same way, but the platform is the same. The platform is the same. And Donna, I'm going to tell you something. I saw a celebration. I thought it was going to be just for a few hours. I was highly mistaken. The Lord showed me so much celebration. It went on more than one day. People were celebrating in other days and other parts of the world. I realized for the very first time that there's a lot of saints that are for our nation. Woo, glory to God. Go ahead, Don. I'm going to let you have it. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Yeah, I, I want you to share again what you, uh, the revelation that the Lord gave you about the Supreme Court. Uh, I'll okay. just read this scripture, and then if you could share that. That was, I, I've watched it twice because uh, it just was so filled with hope, and you know it was God speaking to you. Especially where he just got through speaking the same message to me and told me to watch your video. And when I watched your video, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is the same message. It's not word for word verbatim, but the same message of justice, celebration, a great victory, that God's coming to rescue us. The same message of this wonderful, wonderful time that we're coming into of the glory of God being poured out all over the world. It was the same exact message. But like you said, just a little bit, wording isn't the same, but it's the same message. And I'm just going to read what scripture says about reaping what you sow. Because this nation, where so many, so many people talk bad about this nation, even within the nation, even trying to teach our young people that we're not a great nation. That is not the truth. The truth is that we have been a wonderful nation. Have we been perfect? No. But we are a wonderful, good nation, and we've been self-sacrificing and giving and not just of money we have given tons of money to other nations but also the lives of our young people going over and fighting in wars that have nothing to do with the United States but to rescue other people greater love has no man than it that he lays down his life for his friend this nation has laid its life down for other nations and God has seen this Yes, we've sinned. We have repented. Our sins are under the blood of Jesus. But God is saying, I saw what you did. I saw the good that you did, and you're going to reap it. And this is the scripture, just so people know that it's in the Bible. Okay? This is from the Passion Translation. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is from Galatians chapter 6, starting in verse 7. God will never be mocked. For what you plant 
will always be the very thing you harvest. So, it's, you know, it says, whatever you sow, you will reap that. He says, the harvest you reap reveals the seed that you planted. The harvest you reap reveals the seed that you planted. So we planted the seed of being rescuers. We planted the seed of being a nation that fights for the freedom of other people. And God says, that's what you're going to reap, your freedom. You're going to reap a rescue event. If you plant the corrupt seeds of self-life into this natural realm, you can expect a harvest of corruption. If you plant the good seeds of spirit life, you will reap beautiful fruits that grow from the everlasting life of the spirit. And don't allow yourselves to be weary in planting good seeds. Don't grow weary in doing good. For the season of reaping the wonderful harvest you planted is coming. I'm going to say that again. This is God's word to us right now. For the season of reaping the wonderful harvest we as a nation, okay, have planted is coming. Take advantage of every opportunity to be a blessing to others, especially to our brothers and sisters in the family of faith. So it's like take advantage to be good, to, to sow good seeds, sow love, sow forgiveness, sow prayers. For those that have sinned, say, God, help them to turn from their wicked ways. So goodness. We are going to come into this time now. It's harvest time. God keeps telling us it's harvest time. This is the harvest we're going to reap of all the seeds we have sown for hundreds of years. Oh, oh, worldwide. We're going to reap them now. I want you to share what you said the other day because that was so good. If anyone missed it, I want them to hear. It's so hopeful. I'm going to say something. I'm going to tell you something. You know, as Donna was telling me to share, I was feeling the Holy Spirit. You know, we have experiences. And sometimes you got those big experiences that you just, just stays with you for years. Saturday, even just talking about it, I, you know, I could feel it. And this is so Lord for me to relive what happened a few days ago. I could feel this presence. You have no idea, saints, how much the Lord loves you. And he loves this country. And for me to, to, to see, he showed me this. It was huge. It was the courts of heaven. And, I, and it's like, it's been done. It's been, it's like justice. You know, when I hear the Lord say that, justice will be served. You know, that means it was, it was, this thing has been in the courts of heaven. And the prayers of the saints have reached the courts of heaven regarding this nation. And when he spoke to me and he started to give me details of what was going to happen, you have to understand, I am blown away. Early in the morning, my son, I talked to you this very hour. You tell my people, my plans for this nation is not doom and gloom. He was serious. My plans for this nation is not doom and gloom. And my words, my son, will not come back void. I will do what I said I would do. I have spoken to you and I have spoken to my prophets. And he made it very clear. He says, my spirit is going to move on the highest Supreme Court of the land. He said it to me. He said, son, I'm, I'm, my word will not come back void. My spirit will move on the highest Supreme Court of this land. And I heard the words in that mouth. He says, I will anoint the military. He said, it. he says, I will anoint the military to do my bidding. He says, 
He spoke to me before. He said, you will write, you will have to add to your history books on this nation. Because what I'm about to do has nothing to do with, with your constitution. He said, it's my covenant that I have made with the fathers that are with me now, which means he was talking to heaven. And saints, you have to understand that's why what we might see or hear on the news, it is to no avail in God and no avail in heaven. That's why I'm excited to be a part of this generation. I am so excited to be a part of this generation. And so the enemy tries to throw all of his fiery dots, tries to get the prophets to speak wrong about each other tries to bring confusion and tries to get people to speak bad about God's about God's voice pieces and you you don't follow that stuff you don't follow that malice the scripture tells us in Proverbs that is an abomination to spread the soul discords among the the body of Christ among the brethren. You don't do that. If you don't understand their calling, then you don't speak against it. You just forgive. Just forgive. Because God can work better when we are in one accord than when we are divided. And God's going to bring in a united church, not a divided church. And so saints, we're on the finish line. We're on the finish line. You guys haven't seen anybody celebrate until you see me celebrate. Oh! You guys, all right? You have to understand. I, I celebrate now, but you wouldn't believe it. My whole neighborhood is going to hear me and my wife shout. I'm just, and I'm letting you know that right now. My neighborhood is going, they, they, they haven't heard nothing yet. You know, they're going to hear me shout. It's going to echo. It's going to echo. So I'm telling you, because I was excited. When I left that mountain, I was excited. There's some things that are going to take place in the Supreme Court. God is dealing with people. In the highest Supreme Court of our land, they're going to get some kind of dream or vision if they don't haven't already had it. And, and Donna, I'm going to tell you, saints, I'm telling you, this Supreme, Supreme Court justice was struggling, struggling because he had the evidence in his hand. He had the evidence in his hand. And, and he was struggling because he, <coughs> excuse me, he knew, he knew that he had to do the right thing, no matter what it was going to cost him. Say, see the glory days. For me to see that, and the Lord says, tell it, because I, I didn't want to say it. I really didn't want to say it, Lord. He says, tell it. So I said, but but it, we're talking airwaves. The Lord said, oh no. I protected the airwaves. Tell it. I go, all right. All right. All right. The first miracle was the fact that I was able to do a live stream up there. Never in my life has I ever done that. The second miracle is because I didn't get cut off because of signals. And I felt such a... And you know what's happening? I haven't announced this yet, Donna, but I'm going to announce it now. The Lord said, He says, I want you to go again. He says, I'm going to tell you some more. I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak more revelations to you about what I'm about to do. 
And I said, Lord, this week, and I think it's going to be this week, he says, but this is going to be in a, in a, this is, this might be in a different location, a different mountain. Because I've been, God takes me to different mountains. It's not one mountain. And so I said, okay, Lord, we're going to need another miracle. Because normally when I go up those mountains, I lose all signals. Normally, I lose all signals. So I want saints, I need you to pray. Every saint that's watching us right now, I want you to pray that I get that, you know, God gives us a signal because there's more. He's, he's going to be dealing with me. I really believe we're at the, at the latter part of this Red Sea, this Exodus moment. I'm serious. And, and, and I can't wait. You know, I'm human too. I like to see the move of God. This is the reason why, you know, we show our prophecies that have been coming to pass. You know how easy it is to forget? Many prophecies Donna have said are come to pass. Many prophecies that I have said, many prophecies that uh, Julie Green and some of the, uh, Robin and, and, and I've been saying, it's been coming to pass. But if we allow ourselves to listen to bad news, we can, we can forget the good, excuse me, the good news that are happening. We can forget, you don't want to forget that. Because these were just stepping stones. And I'll tell you this, and Donna, I'm going to let you talk about it. And I'm going to go more details about what happened on that mountain this past Saturday. The minute Israel went to buy the Red Sea and they saw Pharaoh, it's in the scriptures. They forgot about the miracles that happened just that quick. All they could think about was, you should have left us alone. Was there not enough graves? They totally forgot about the miracle. He had totally forgot about the wealth transfer. They had just had a wealth transfer. We can't forget about what God is doing. Okay? This what's about to happen is just a climax. But God has been working behind the scenes. For greater purpose. I would have loved to see what happened in 2020 happen a different way. Donna, that is our change. Saints, that is our change. I see the greater purpose of what he's doing now. A much greater purpose. And that's not going to come without pushback. It's not going to come without persecution. It's not going to come without lies and deceit. Because the enemy is going to throw everything he can. Lies, deceit, you know, try to bring division. But every one of us has been called to God. Every one of us. And no one can stop that. The only person that can stop that calling is you. Don't give up. You stand. You stand. And so Donna, saints, I'm on this mountain. And it was really interesting because just before at the edge of the mountain, at the edge, I'm starting to climb because I got to have, you know, stuff, grills, you know, gears and I'm starting to climb. As I'm climbing the mountains on Saturday, the Lord stops, starts giving me downloads. You see the way our human mind, think? I'm thinking I got to go up there and, and I'm going to go and I'm going to worship for about an hour, three hours. And I was prepared to do that. I'm revealing things that I didn't tell you on Saturday. So you better thank the Lord for Donna hearing from God, because I'm telling you now. I'm going, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to pray. I'm going to worship. I'm going to have a great time. And, and then I know God's going to talk to me, because that's normally what happens. So as I'm starting to ascend of the mountain, the first level of the mountain, the Lord starts downloading. I'm going, Lord, this is not the, the most perfect time to start. Get. I stopped. I couldn't finish climbing the mountain. God starts giving me these downloads about the economy, about how the, he's, the, the currencies are going to shift. You know, I, you know, about how this dollar is going, these dollars are going to go, this currency is going to go higher. And this currency is going to be there. Not, it wasn't a bad thing. It was actually a good thing. 
it was actually a good thing. You know, now I didn't say it was going to be that way forever, but I saw it. I go, wow. Woo. He started giving me these downloads, all this, this, this. I'm like, whoa, Lord. And I said, Lord, I, you know, I, I got to take the notes. And, and then, and then, then and, and with that, that took a little, almost 30, 40 minutes. And then, so I'm now, I'm like, okay, I got to get to this mountain. I got to get up there. You know? And so it's, and like, Lord, I normally do, I normally do this at three or four in the morning. But now you, this is early and the sun is coming up and it's going to get really hot. And Lord said, no, 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 you're going to be fine. A cloud. The whole time I was there, a cloud covered me from the scorching sun. A big, huge cloud. The whole time I was there, Satan this was a miracle. Miracle after miracle. And then I'm like, I got a signal. I've never had signals up here before. Whoa! Miracle after miracle. And so, so then the Lord started dealing with the Supreme Court. I'll like say, I'm going to tell you about the Supreme Court, the highest Supreme of the land. You're going to see some serious changes. Boldness like you've never seen. Seriously. And the Lord made it very clear that if they don't, or who, whatever vessel he uses, if they don't want to do it, God will remove them. And he will raise up someone that will do it. Because no matter what is going to happen, it's going to happen. Because of our prayers and the covenant that God has with this nation. Donna blessed me when she was telling me about how this nation has rescued so many people. It's happening now. You know, you and I are not an accident to be born in the United States. You are not you are not an accident to be born in other nations. Remember when it was me and Julie Green a few weeks ago? What is in the middle of Jerusalem? USA. J E R U S A L M. USA is in the middle of Jerusalem. That's a special biblical code. That's all. That's from, you know, the beginning of the Bible to the end. Jesus said, was either the book of Luke. I will raise up a nation to bear fruit. God has been using the United States to bear spiritual fruit. We're the only nation in the world where over 90% of the gospel, because of technology, is being spread to the rest of the world. And not just the gospel, like Donna said, money. Do you know, now this was according to Israel, the United States has given more, the Christians in the United States have given more to support the nation of Israel than any nation right now. Now that could change, but right now we are on top. There's blessings when we support God's people. There's blessings when you support the work of the kingdom. There's blessings behind it. Those are not man's promises. Those are God's promises. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. But say you have to understand the things that are going on in this world. The enemy will want you to think that he's controlling it and that he's trying to change times and seasons. 
and what you seen is a pushback. What I saw in the spirit on that mountain is the enemy is running out of ideas. He's running on empty. Woo! You know, he may try to fight to the finish, but he's finished himself. Glory to God. And so saints, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know. How do I say this, Lord? When I was on that mountain, I saw things at such a different perspective. Totally different perspective. More than I've ever saw it. Nobody can convince me otherwise. I saw things at such a different perspective. There was more shown to me on that mountain than I've seen in such a last handful of weeks. And so the best thing I can do is encourage every saint to encourage every saint to stand on God's word. Justice was being served like you wouldn't believe. It's going to start with the United States and it's going to hit the other nations. Justice is going to be served. God is, is going to be like a domino effect. I saw justice be served, United States. I saw Canada. I saw Australia. I saw even, yes, I'm going to say it, China. I saw Germany. I saw Iran. I, I mean, justice be God. So I'm, God is going to move like a, a how, how do you say it? A bulldozer. That's the best way to say it. Around the world, justice being served, justice being served, your Africa, justice being served. Well, that's a continent, God moving, justice being served, Philippines, justice being served, Korea, justice being served, Jamaica, justice being served. I saw it was such, and, and, and it's like the Lord says, I want you to come again. Come again. There's more I'm going to show you. And there's more you're going to tell my saints. And I really believe this is happening. It's because at the Red Sea moment, God told Moses, tell Israel to move forward and I will divide the sea. And while God was dividing the sea and the, and the winds were coming and dry and they were walked on dry land. The whole time that happened, remember how Donna was speaking of, you know, some, it was darkness for the enemy, but it was light for Israel. The enemy did not see what God was about to do. You see, I'm going to say this and I'm going to tell you, you're going to love this. The only plan that wasn't revealed to the enemy in Egypt, Moses told Pharaoh, what God was about to do. Every plague Moses told Pharaoh about. Every plague the enemy knew about. Every judgment in Egypt the enemy knew about. Except the Red Sea. <laughs> Woo! That was the only one, Tana, <laughs> that God did not allow the enemy to hear or see. Oh, glory to God. The Lord showed me this on the mountain. He said, tell them. The, la the, the, the latter part of this, the enemy will know nothing and he won't even know it's coming. Whoa. That was the only time. Moses never told Pharaoh, don't come down the sea or you're going to get close. He never. He never told Pharaoh, I'm going to open the Red Sea. He never told Pharaoh. That I'm going to give you darkness the whole time my children are crossing. Pharaoh didn't know the plans of God. And they're doing the climax. Woo. Don, I'm going to go ahead. Talk to us. Oh, is that powerful? You know, it just <laughs> keeps going through my spirit that how God compelled you. You've got to speak the word. He brought you to the mountain. Tell my people. Tell my people. Tell. You've got to speak. Like You're like, oh, I don't want to say it. Yes, you have to say. 
And it's because God performs. This is what scripture says, that God performs the words of his prophets. He needs his prophets to speak so that he can perform those words. If you don't speak those words, Manny, then God can't perform them. He says, I don't perform the thoughts of my prophets. Mm -hmm. I perform the words of my prophets. And so as you are saying this, as you're declaring it, decreeing it, that's what's reverberating in my spirit. It's me and he's saying it. Now God's going to perform it because it's not your thoughts, your words. You are speaking the word of God. You're speaking the thoughts of God. You're getting the revelation from God. You're declaring it. And God says, I promise I'm going to perform the words my prophets speak because they're my words. They're my mouthpiece. They're speaking on my behalf. We're going to see God perform these things that you've spoken, that God's spoken to you and revealed to you. And it's exciting. It's, I never heard that revelation about the Red Sea, that that was the only thing that God did not let. Which, when you said it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> so some surprises are coming. Some big surprises are coming. That no one's going to see it coming or know what the plan of God is, but God's just going to do it. Moses didn't even know. When he got to the Red Sea, he didn't know until God said, stretch out your rod over the Red Sea. And then it parted. He, all of us, we're all going to be in awe of God at this grand rescue event. And at the same time that he rescues us, he's going to take out the enemies that have really caused so much misery and heartache being used by the enemy. And prayerfully, that they will repent when they come under that judgment that's going to fall on them. The pit that they've dug for others, they're going to fall into. I pray that they do, that their hearts are softened, that they repent, that they're truly sorry for what they've done. Because this is the hour we're entering into right now. I want to share one last thing, too. It really, when you were talking about unity um, and how important it is to maintain unity, uh, the Lord brought me in the spirit to the top of a mountain. It wasn't in heaven. It was a, a mountaintop. And we sat on the cliff, and below us was a river was flowing. And as I looked down, Jesus and I were sitting there, and our feet were just getting washed in the river, but there were a lot of rocks in the river. And so I knew those rocks shouldn't have been there. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, the enemy put these rocks here. He said, these, if the enemy cannot stop my children from praying, from worshiping, uh, for coming before me, then he will use other tactics to try to hinder what they're doing. And that's what these rocks were. He said it can be confusion, it can be chaos, it can be distractions. And then he showed me big boulders that were in this river. And the river represented the, the um, move of God, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the, the, the outpouring of the river of God flowing through the nations. And he said he puts these boulders in there. And what those boulders represented were offenses and ought that we have in our heart towards our brother. It's, those were the things, the hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, offenses. We were big boulders in this river that was stopping the flow of the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, uh, Manny, when you were talking about how important it is to stay in the place of unity, because united we stand and divided we fall. So if the enemy can't get us one way, he's going to try to get us fighting against one another. We need to extend grace and love, forgiveness immediately. If somebody offends us, we immediately forgive them and ask God to bless them. Keep our hearts pure, especially towards one another in the kingdom of God. Because this is the tactic of the enemy. This is what he does to stop the move of the Holy Spirit, to stop the glory from being poured out. Unity is, is like that oil pouring down the head huh, of Aaron and down his beard, that precious oil. It's a precious oil of unity that God wants to pour out all over the world in his glory, his love poured out. And the enemy would try to stop it by causing us to be angry, offended, uh, hurt, wounded by one another. No. When somebody says something or does something that offends us, let's pray for them, forgive them right away, and keep that river flowing. Because without the river of God flowing, what have we got? We've got nothing. We've got nothing. Donna, I'm going to add to that. When you, when I, 
Lord told me about that revelation about how much the enemy knows and how much he doesn't know. You spoke of unity, saints, I'm telling you, this is so awesome. So we speak in the word of God. Right at the Red Sea, God's about to do the biggest miracle ever for the history of Israel. Right at the Red Sea, what happened? Right after the transfer of wealth, the enemy tries to bring Israel into disunity with Moses. Look at that. Just before the Red, God already had the plan. He was going to open the Red Sea. And there's time for them to cross over to getting closer to the promised land. And the enemy brings a division. Okay? Anytime the biggest miracle is about to take place, you'll have the biggest confusion. Donna, saints, you know this. What happened in Numbers? They went, the 12 spies went out for 40 days. When they came back, it was the, God was ready to allow them to go in to take the land. The biggest split up took place right there. The disunion, 10 spies brought in a bad report and brought in a disunion in the congregation. And God says, this generation will not go in. Joshua and Caleb, because they believe me and they're in union with me, they'll see it. Anytime there's a huge miracle, the enemy would try to throw in a monkey wrench to bring in this union because he knows if I can divide them, I can get them. But if I can't divide them, wow. So I just wanted to release that to you right now. Donna, tell us, this has been so awesome. Tell them how they can get to your uh, website and your ministry. Uh, my website is DonnaRigney.org. And uh, that's anything you need to know is on my uh, website. And my books are on there. Uh, my schedule, everything is on there. Uh, my uh, YouTube page is Donna Rigney Ministries. And we've been doing uh, uh, some new um, YouTubes. Uh, recently, our son John came and joined us here and visited in Florida. And uh, I did a, a new show we started on my YouTube channel. And it's called The Prophet's Chat. And... Uh, so I interviewed him and he always oh, he shared his heart. He's so powerfully prophetic, very, very anointed uh, man of God. So uh, if you want to go on the YouTube channel and check that out, you'll be blessed.